Have you ever wanted to have your very own customized avatar image? And better yet, do you want to create your very own web application that will allow you to create your own customized avatar image? If you answered yes, then this video is for you because today I'm going to be showing you how you could develop your very own web application that will allow you to generate a custom avatar image. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So the first thing that you want to do is fire up the terminal. And so let me show you how the app looks like. And so let's have a look at the requirements. So we're essentially going to be making use of these libraries. And so we're going to go into detail in just a moment. And let's open up the avatar. So the avatar will look like this. So that's the default, okay? Using all of the default parameters. So let's open up Adam as well in the background. And let me fire up the application. Before doing that, let's activate Conda. And then run the app, streamlit run app.py. All right, here you go. The app is running. So let me open up side by side together with the text editor. And so let's have a look. So this is the avatar maker app that we're going to be building today. And so you will be allowed to customize your avatar in the sidebar here. And so I've categorized the various features of the avatar into the following. And so you can feel free to modify this to your own liking. So here, we're going to be able to select whether to have the circles behind or to have transparent background. It's right here to have the circle background or to have it transparent. So why don't I change it to transparent? And then you'll notice that the circle will disappear. Okay, and the skin color, you can also modify that as well. Hair color, but we need hair for that. Let's find the hair, it's facial hair. Oh, okay, it's at the head top. No hair right now, eye patch, hats. Yeah, so it's aside from having hair, it's also whether to have hat or not or turban or other long hair or short hair, hair to the sides, long hair or half hats or eye patch, winter hat, long hair. Or short hair, let's see. Let's find short hair. Short hair. Okay, there you go. Okay, however, if you have no idea what features you want your avatar to have, you could just generate a random one by clicking on the random avatar. And so every time you click on it, it will generate a new avatar. Okay, so you notice that the shirt will also change and the accessories like the glasses or sunglasses, the hair color and everything will change every time. So you could play around with this and when you're happy, you could just click on it on the download here and then it will download it directly into your computer. And then you could upload this to your social media. Okay, so Let's have a look at the code. So the code that we're using today will make use of the following libraries. So for sure, we're using the streamlit for the web framework. We're using the Pi avatar for generating this awesome avatar image. And so actually this application was inspired by this avatar generator from Fang Pin Lin and it is built using the and this particular web application that I'm building today is based on the Pi avatar library. 
which was created by the author here. And Pi Avatar was based on the sketch library avatars designed by Pablo Stanley. Okay, and so let's have a look under the hood. So here we're using Pi Avatar. And then we're making use of the PIL library for the image. And then we're using the base64 for the encoding of the image and also allowing us to download the image as well. And so we're using the random library in order to generate a random number, which we will be using for getting the random avatar. Okay, so I'll go over that in just a moment. And the page title here is right here, Avatar Maker. And then the description is right here, line number 11. And then the credits is provided here on lines 13 until 17. And one of the lengthiest part of the code is the sidebar, as you would notice from lines number 21 until lines number 128. So all of this are the sidebar that you see right here. Okay, so we're starting from customize your avatar, the header, which is right here, st.sidebar. So notice that if I delete dot sidebar, the header here will go directly to the main panel. Customize your avatar, it's right here. It goes here. And then it dis disappears from here. And then I need to add it back. Save it. Okay, and then it goes back to the sidebar right here. Customize your avatar. All right, and then let's have a look on line number 24. So notice here that all of the options, I added the name option in front. So in order to make sense of this, let's have a look at the avatar generation function. So recall that I've imported the Pi avatar as PA right here, and we're making use of the Pi avatar function, which will be responsible for generating the avatar that we see here. And the input arguments are right here. And so you, you have the input argument for the style, skin color, top type, hair color, hat color, and etc. So I'm adding option underscore in front of each of these input argument parameter. Okay. And in order to allow you to be able to customize the features of the avatar, like for example, the type of the head top, no hair, eye patch, hat, we are making use of a list of possible input arguments right here. Let's have a look at the list right here. For example, the option style is left alone because it has only two options. Style will be circle or transparent. However, for skin color or other type, top type or hair color, you're going to be seeing that it is a list comprising of many elements. And each elements here are provided in the drop down menu bar right here. So tanned, yellow, pale is right here. Tanned, yellow, pale. And so the default value will be the first value that you see in the list. Tanned, no hair, auburn color here is black. Okay, so all of the default will be the first element. And remember that I've mentioned that we're having a random avatar generation. So it's going to be selecting a random number from amongst the available elements here. So for example, it might be selecting yellow at random if the index number is randomized to be one because in Python, the index starts from zero. And so if it's randomized to be four, it will be zero, one, two, three, four. And so it has a color of brown. Okay, so let me show you the random function. The random function is right here, ran range. from zero until the length of the list. Because the thing is, each list will have a different length because it has a different number of members or a different number of elements. For example, the list of the skin color will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven members. But then for the head top, it will have a couple of members here. Okay, probably 20 or so function. Okay, so the random number will be selecting a random number from zero until the length of the list. 
So if the list have seven, then from the random range of zero and seven, it will randomize a number. So any number between zero and seven. And then with that number, like for example, if it's five, then it will be selecting the fifth position. I mean the sixth position because index start from zero. So it has this color. Okay. And so it will be reflected in the generated avatar. Okay, so this is the list of the available elements. And let's have a look at the if here. If the ST button, random avatar, is clicked, what will happen? So upon clicking the random avatar button here, it will be triggering the if statement here. And upon clicking on the button, it will be triggering the random number generation. And once we have a random number generated, for each of the index here, for each of the input arguments, we will be selecting each member, each specific member that has been randomized, and then we're going to be assigning it to the avatar to be generated. Okay, and so I hope that makes sense. And however, if we don't click on it, which falls to the else condition, if we load the website without clicking on the random avatar button here, it will be selecting, as you see here, the index number to be zero. And when the index number is zero, what happens? The first element will be selected as the default features for the avatar. Okay, so this is the explanation for lines 26 until 128. Okay, and so I've also grouped them according to similarity, like for example, the head top, hair color, and hat color. I've grouped them into head top. And so all of these are belonging to the face category, facial hair type, facial hair color, mouth type, eye type, eyebrow type. So it has something to do with the face. So then I group them together. And then the clothes type, clothes color, clothes graphic type, and the accessory, I group them into the clothes and accessory category. Okay, so let's play some more with the features here. So let me make the app bigger. Let's have a look. So let's see if I could customize this to look similar to me. Short hair, hair color. Okay, no hat, facial hair type. Do I have a mustache? No. What is that? Okay. So let's play around with this. Beard, beard light, beard medium. Okay, so I'll just keep it at default. Hair color, black, blonde, brown. I'll keep it at black mouth type let's have a look concerned disbelief eating grimace sad scream open serious so that looks serious smile yes i i guess this one looks nice Tongue, be a bit silly, twinkle, vomit, <laughs> okay, so let's have smile, eye type, okay, let's have a look at the eye types, close, cry, dizzy, eye roll, happy, Hearts to the side, squint, surprised, okay, wink, wink wacky, okay, that's funny, I'll have, what should I have, happy, okay, I'll just have it happy. Eyebrow type, default, natural, angry, angry, natural, flat, natural, raised, excited, 
please it's like the natural okay bigger eyebrow up down frown let's see which one should I have I'll go with the default natural then cloth type blazer shirts blazer sweater how about hoodie what else does it have collar sweater graphic shirts overall shirt crew neck yeah that looks good color okay so there's so many colors here blue gray gray too okay so i normally use dark gray in my video shoot let's go with this one Include graphic type let's play around with this that is there okay so it has to be a graphic shirt I think okay there you go so you need to have a graphic shirt in order to have the clothes graphic type work bear skull bear bear that okay how about that and then I can download it. And here you go. This is my avatar. So at default, it's generating a transparent background. So you see it as a dark color here. So the options have been covered already and also the avatar generating function was also covered already. And so upon clicking on the download link that you see here, it will be making use of the custom function for the encoding and the decoding of the image. And so the generated avatar image will be read in, meaning that in the first run, function to generate the avatar image will be creating a image called avatar.png but then the thing is it is impossible for streamlit to allow us to download the avatar.png directly and so we had to have a slight hack where we read in the avatar.png file and then we encode and decode it and then make it available as a download link so if you hover your mouse over the link and then you want to copy the link here let me try pasting the link here you notice that this is the link and it is an encoded image as you see here encoded in base 64 however if we click on the link it will be the png image and then lines number 160 until 164 is the rendered avatar section here and then Rendered avatar will generate the avatar.png file because it is making use of the avatar variable here, which is the function to run using the pa.pyavatar function. And then we render it as a PNG file. And so you could also hack this a bit, change this to a SVG, this also, and then this also. Again, it probably will be a SVG. So I'll leave that up to you and so I hope that this video was helpful to you. And if you're finding value out of this, please help us beat the YouTube algorithm by liking the video, subscribing if you haven't already, and also making sure that you hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified as soon as a new video is released. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.